African American Education Trends How the American School System Has Failed These Students Here is a general timeline of important events that impacted African American education over the, over the years. Education under Jim Crow laws, which lasted from 1877 to 1950, gave lesser education to its African American students. Southern schools were racially segregated, and, and schools for white children got more public money. There were not many public schools for African American children, and African American schools often had an inadequate amount of school supplies and quality teachers. Jim Crow laws still have a lasting effect on today's education. No public schools in the country are in as bad a crisis as those in Detroit. High school dropout rates are more than twice the national average, and teachers are striking over dangerously dilapidated buildings, low pay, and inadequate resources. Detroit has closed more than two-thirds of its buildings since 2000, leaving many of them boarded up, abandoned, and ripe for looting. With the district more than $3.5 billion in debt and students leaving for charter schools in the suburbs, there is no easy fix. So, how did we get here? Like many American cities, Detroit saw its families and tax revenue move to the suburbs. White flight increased as racial desegregation went into effect. And with auto plants relocating to the suburbs, families followed the job. From 1961 to 1971, more than 50,000 white students left the district. The flight from Detroit robbed schools of badly needed resources and led to six teacher strikes in 25 years. The Pew Research Center did a survey on the views of various groups on race. Their statistics show how an unequal education can put African Americans and other underrepresented groups at a disadvantage. According to their surveys, more than, four in ten Afri more than four in ten Americans say the country still has work to do to give black people equal rights. A majority, 56%, see being black as a disadvantage, with 25% saying it hurts people's ability to get ahead by a lot. 60% of blacks say some, someone has acted as if they thought they weren't smart. Blacks are more likely than whites, Hispanics, and Asians to say they have faced these situations. This graph defines what many believe attribute to disadvantages for African Americans. With less access to schools and high paying jobs, some of the reasons, major reasons why. The data from the Pew Research Center translates to data collected on education trends from the U.S. Department of Education and the United Negro College Fund. The key points from the national reading testing scores are that at grade 8, the 2017 average reading scores for black students was 249, but the average scores for each group was higher in 2017 than in 1992, which was 237. At grade 8 in 2017, white students scored 25 points higher than black students. The key points for the math reading, national reading scores are, at grade 8, the 2017 average mathematics scores for black students was 260. They were not measurably, measurably different from the corresponding scores in 2015, but the average score for each group was higher in 2017 than in 1990. At grade 8 in 2017, white students scored 32 points higher than black students. This chart shows some data of other students compared to African American students who earned who earn AP or IB course credits in 2013. In comparison to Asian and white students, only 6% earn credit from math, 8% from science, and 23% from other subjects. African-American students often have less access to many resources to supplement their achievement academically. According to the United Negro College Fund, there is $733 less spent on schools with 90% or more students of color on necessary resources. 57% do not have access to a variety of math and science courses needed for college readiness versus the 81% of Asian Americans and 71% of white, white students 
from 2011 to 2012. 61 percent of African American students who took the ACT did not meet any of the four ACT college readiness benchmarks in 2015. And finally, 10 percent of public school principals were black versus the 80 percent who were white from 2011 to 2012. Although there have been laws passed that put an end to this, heightened test scores and a slightly better chance for these underrepresented students to succeed, there is still a lot that must be done. The fact is, is that many view some aspects of being African American disadvantage, with one of the main reasons being inadequate access to, in to quality schools. As seen in the videos, schools are starting to be rebuilt in many of America's failed school systems, but why must it be this way? Why is it acceptable for certain groups of students to remain invisible to our education system's eyes? African American and other minority groups' test scores have been increasing, but this does not mean that school's quality of education is getting better. Most of these students should be encouraged to take challenging college-level courses and have access to them. There should also be equal funding, regardless of the number of students of color. Most importantly, all students should be given enough education to prepare them for college. Furthermore, schools should have more representation in their faculty so that their students know that they can be successful, regardless of all the obstacles that they face. African American students should not have to face the detriments of our failing school system. However, there is still hope, and schools in failed dis districts, such as Detroit, are slowly, pulling, are slowly starting to turn around. We are a full Title I program, which means the makeup of our school is lots and lots of families that are below the poverty level and that have a great need. It does not mean that people don't love their children. It doesn't mean that they don't care. They are facing some challenges that most of us don't face. And so what we tried to do is we tried to make sure that they had the same opportunity that other families had. So we immediately decided to have a uniform and a washer and a dryer. We immediately got the showers fixed because sometimes people don't come to school because they have haven't had a chance to wash their clothes and they're embarrassed. Sometimes we will uh, go in our own pockets and either purchase detergent. I've had uniforms in my closet. And sometimes that they don't make it to school on time or they haven't eaten breakfast. Breakfast bars don't feel well. Did you eat breakfast this morning? No. Go eat this real quick. Give them a bottle of water, come right back in. They're set. When these children come to our school, it is our job to make them feel safe, to make them feel loved, and to portray to them the real importance of education because education can transform lives. I truly believe that. That is what I give my children when I teach them. There are also other ways that we can help. We can support organizations that advocate for underrepresented students. We can volunteer at nonprofits that support student success. And finally, we can advocate. We can, talk to our re we can talk to our regional representatives, protest, and inform our community about the failing public school system. Thank you.